part one then, energy changes in the system and the way that energy is stored before and after such changes. So firstly, let's define what a system means in this. It's an object or a group of objects, that's all. When a system changes, the energy is stored in different ways. And there are eight stores, there are eight ways to store energy. Chemical, thermal, kinetic, gravitational, elastic, nuclear, electrostatic, and magnetic. And you need to memorize them all. And you need to be able to recognize them as well. There are four ways that we can transfer energy between those stores. That's by mechanical work, so that's by physical forces. Electrical work, and that's by current, essentially, the moving charged particles. And then there's heating by particles and heating by radiation. Essentially, let's simplify this down to an analogy. We've got the energy stored in one store, and we transfer that into another store. Essentially, whenever a system changes, we are changing where the energy is stored. It's the same energy, we're just storing it in a different way. Now, the most important point about this entire topic in energy is we don't have much of an idea of what energy is, but we know that we can calculate it. So for each of these eight stores, we can calculate a size. We can calculate a value for how much energy we have stored in that. And that allows us to do calculations to make other things happen or to work out other important quantities. So you need to get really good at identifying those stores and transfers. And whenever you recognize it's a stores and transfers question, I suggest you use a simple sentence structure like this. The something store of the object decreases, the energy is transferred by, and then the something store of the object increases. So the first store is identify one of those eight starting stores and what is the store of, as in what object are we talking about? Then the energy transfer is one of the four energy transfer options that I've given you. And then the final store, whatever that type of store is of this, which object that is storing it. So here's a for example, for a petrol car, the chemical store of the fuel decreases. The energy is transferred by mechanical work the kinetic store of the car increases. For a falling ball, the gravitational store of the ball decreases. Energy is transferred by mechanical work. The kinetic store of the ball increases. So we, all we've done is identified the starting store, the final store, and the way in which the energy has been transferred between them. So here's some other common examples. So energy in an object moving upwards starts in the kinetic store. It's transferred mechanically to a gravitational store. An object hitting an obstacle, it starts with energy in the kinetic store. It's a mechanical energy transfer and it ends up heating the surroundings. So the thermal store in the end. An object being accelerated, we just, we don't have any detail of where the energies come from. So we've got a mechanical transfer into a kinetic store. A vehicle slowing down would initially have all the energy in the kinetic store, then it's mechanically transferred by the brakes to the thermal store of the surroundings, that is. So boiling water in a kettle starts in an electrostatic store, let's say that's called that the mains, and then the energy is transferred by electrical working through the heating element to a thermal store of the water. And that's really all there is to it. This is an oversimplification, but these are some really, really straightforward marks to get as long as you've memorized your eight stores and your four transfers. These are really straightforward marks to get as long as you've memorized your eight stores and your four transfers, and you can use that simple sentence structure.